every morning with drive Been on the grind, know I had to survive We had to win Started from the dirt and the rubble I had to be the needle that was popping your bubble Hello and welcome in again to the Rookie Prospect Profile Series, a Zilla Fantasy Elite production. Today we're going to be looking at running back Kendra Miller. Kendra Miller was drafted number 71 by the New Orleans Saints and they come into the league out of TCU. Looking at some of their physical traits, we see that Kendra Miller comes in at 5 foot 11, 215 pounds and a BMI of 30.0. They did not do any testing, so we have an NA on the 40 score, which also puts an NA in the speed score. But the 40 time is needed in order to get an R prospect score, so we just put in a 4.52 as a dummy replacement for Kendra Miller. So putting those physical traits in along with some of their college numbers into the R Studio regression model, we get a prospect score of 14.487, which ranks 94th overall. That is the 69.7th percentile out of all 310 running backs in the R Studio Models database. Uh, shifting over to see who are the closest comparables to that 14.487 R prospect score. We see that the next closest better than him is actually Zach Moss, then Stephen Ridley, Doug Martin, Kalen Balaj, and David Wilson. The next worst is Kenneth Dixon, Maurice Jones-Drew, Brian Hall, Andre Brown, and Ty Montgomery. It's kind of a whole bunch of gross in there. Um, I can tell you that the R-Studio model did like Kendra Miller more than the Neural Network model, so keep that in mind. Um, like I said, this is about a 70th percentile outcome here, or 70th percentile prospect in the R-Studio model. He did not fare so well in the neural network model. Along that lines, we see a whole lot of grossness in this particular range in terms of our prospects. So the, the 10 nearest Kendra Miller, um, really Doug Martin and Maurice Jones-Drew are the only ones of note in there. Brian Hill, Stephen Ridley had one season, I think, where he scored a bunch of touchdowns. Um, but other, other than that, Kalen Blage, David Wilson, Andre Brown, Ty Montgomery, largely disappointments in the fantasy community. They had their spots here and there, but not somebody that you want to draft, you know, in your dynasty leagues to bolster your squad there. Keep that in mind. So switching over now to the machine learning model for Kendra Miller, which I already said it did not like him. Uh, we can see that he comes in with a mean of 9.98, median of 10.01. Uh, their minimum prediction was 6.26. Their maximum prediction, 14.52. A 10th percentile outcome for them, 7.87. A 25th percentile outcome is at 8.7. 75th percentile, 11.8. And 90th percentile at 12.19. Then they had an M50 gap of 2.48. Really to give some perspective in terms of why it didn't like Kendra Miller. So he didn't do any testing. And the way that the neural network handles this is it goes through when it's training and validating all of these uh, prospects. Anybody that didn't test in a particular category, it's going to automatically populate the average. So it's going to do a KNN, which is a K nearest neighbors calculation. And really what it's going to do is find the uh, 15 closest players and it's going to take an average of the 15 closest players and fill that in for that particular uh, spot. So really what it's going to do when it goes through, it's going to have an average um, for that particular input. Any of those inputs can be essentially the average of 15 other players within the model or the nearest players within that model. So it's going to go through, it's going to give them an average 40 score, uh, speed score, all these things because Kendra Miller didn't do any testing due to some injuries. And that might be part of the reason why his uh, neural network outcome doesn't look so good compared to maybe what the community uh, believes at large. But kind of going back to the R Studio model, it also didn't necessarily pop up some super great prospects there, or at least ones that hit in the NFL outside of Doug Martin and Maurice Jones-Drew. Um, certainly it remains to be seen whether Kendra Miller uh, lives up to that potential. Just getting into the, the ranks there for some of his numbers, we see the mean at 26, median 27, minimum outcome was 17th best. Um, it did like 
some of that for him. And then the maximum output there, though, 26th overall. Uh, that M50 number was 10th best. So it's, you know, a narrow range. Pretty confident most of the their values are going to fall in that range. Again, given the fact that he didn't do any testing. So it's taking KNN equals 15 in the neural network model for all of those missing values. Uh, what Kendra Miller would have tested at would have, you know, maybe changed things in this model a little bit um, or a lot bit. So getting into what some of these numbers mean anyway. So we have that 9.98, uh, 10 range there for its median or average outcome. Donald Brown, if you remember him, he was exactly at 10 for his career best. Uh, Tyler Algier last year, you know, he hit a thousand yards rushing, but he hit 9.96 in terms of fantasy points per game. Um, and really, that's probably going to be his best outcome in his career. So he's in that 10 point range. Uh, Mike Gillisley, Javorius Allen, James Starks are all, you know, 10-3 or 10-4, somewhere in that range. A little bit lower than some of those guys. Jalen Samuels, Jalen Richard, uh, Tricandrick West, Cam Akers, actually. His best season so far is only 9.42. So in that particular range is kind of the mean uh, outcome that this is spitting out, that maximum of 14 0.52. Once we get up into that range, we have a couple people or three people there at 14 and a half. It's Marlon Mack, Lamar Miller, Giovanni Bernard, slightly higher than that. You know, Carlos Hyde, LeGarrette Blount, Tariq Cohen, those are all at 14.6. Um, Ramondre Stevenson there at 14.65. Slightly below that max of 14.52, we have Antonio Gibson, 14.44. JHIE hit uh, 14.4. Uh, Miles Sanders, career back. Best 14.2. Damian Harris current best is 14.01. So somewhere in that range is basically what it's saying is the maximum output for Kendra Miller. And I, I must say, like, I wasn't super impressed with Kendra Miller um, just as a prospect coming in. I know there's some people that are pretty high on him. Saints obviously took him 71st overall, which is pretty solid there. But neural network model certainly uh, with its how it's handling all of those empty spots for his testing results doesn't necessarily like him as a prospect either. So hopefully the RStudio model combined with this machine learning model can give you a little bit of additional information, additional confidence uh, in the analysis that you're doing for all of these incoming rookies. And that's really going to do it for today's rookie prospect profile uh, presented by Zilla Fantasy Elite. Thanks everybody for tuning in. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. Appreciate the view. Thanks everybody. Bye. As a reminder to how the machine learning model functions for those who have not caught it yet, a very broad overview, the model is training and validating and then going backwards to adjust the weights of each connection of each node in the network. It will do this 30 different times to get the closest predictions from the validation portion of the data. So to explain a little bit further or more in depth, the model will go through on the first epoch, again of 30, training on 80% of the data. It will then predict outcomes of the remaining 20% of the data called the validation set. It sees how close it was to each prediction and then we'll go backwards through each connection to determine how much each connection provided to the error. It will then adjust the bad connections down in weight and boost the good connections up in weight. It will then start that second epoch again of 30 total with the brand new weights for each connection and train on the same 80% and make more predictions on the same 20% that validation set. It then again goes backwards through each connection to adjust the weights. It does this 30 different times, any more than that, and this particular network will start overfitting the data and becomes worse actually at predicting the outcomes. For reference, there are a total of 14,040 neural connections within this neural network model. At the very end of these 30 epochs, with the best weights at each neural connection, it will then make a prediction on the incoming prospect, given that prospect's own individual inputs. I have the model go through that entire process 100 different times, reshuffling the 80% training set and the 20% validation set for each of the 100 iterations. It makes 100 predictions in totality, and this is what is used for the mean, median, min, max, standard deviation, 10th, 25th, 75th, and 90th percentile outcomes, as well as that mid-50 gap or M50 gap, 
which is the gap between the 25th and 75th percentile outcomes. The larger the M50 gap, the more spread out the predictions were, and the more volatile the player outcomes can be considered should that prospect ever reach 80 opportunities in a season. The data the model is training on is any running back in the last 10 NFL seasons, so that's 2013 through 2022, that had at least 80 opportunities in one of those seasons. There are 20 different inputs into the model currently, and the output is that NFL players' career best season in fantasy points per game in a PPR setting. There are 243 total running backs with at least 80 combined targets and carries within the model. Every morning we drive, been on 